Before we start today's video, I want to bring to you a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform. You'll find thousands of online classes where you can learn new skills. I'm all for personal growth and understand that the best investment you can make is to invest in yourself. I learned how to better edit videos and also how to take better care of myself physically and mentally. I was pleasantly surprised at the wide variety of courses that Skillshare offers. A few other things I like about Skillshare is that it's ad-free, so you won't get bothered while you're learning new skills, and there are new premium classes launched every week. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Make 2022 a year filled with new possibilities to learn and grow. 20-year-old Sophie Sergi lived in Pitkiss Point, Alaska in 1993. On April 25th, she went to visit a friend of hers at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. The last time Sophie was seen was when she left her group of friends to smoke a cigarette outside. The next morning, a janitor found Sophie's body in a dormitory bathtub. She had been stabbed multiple times, shot in the back of the head, and also indecently assaulted. Investigators collected evidence from the crime scene, including male DNA from Sophie's body. They also interviewed Sophie's friends and other people that either lived in the dorm or studied at the university that might know something. Unfortunately, investigators were not able to find a substantial lead that would help them find the perpetrator. The case then went cold. In 2019, investigators decided to take another look at the case. This time, they had more advanced DNA technology to aid them. Investigators took the DNA of the unknown man that was collected from Sophie's body and submitted it into a public DNA database. They were then able to find a relative of the suspect. They believed it was his aunt that they found. She had uploaded a sample to a commercial online genealogy database. The man who they believed was responsible is 47-year-old Stephen Downs. Still, in 2019, investigators executed a search warrant at his home in Auburn, Maine. They collected a DNA sample from him. This DNA sample matched the one collected from the crime scene back in 1993. He was then promptly arrested. Downs' trial began in January of 2022. During the trial, jurors heard from people who were at the dorm on the night of the crime, forensic experts and law enforcement. We learned that Downs was a freshman at the university in 1993 and lived in the dorm where Sophie's life was taken. Downs' friend and then roommate testified that he owned guns and a large hunting knife, including a 22 caliber pistol. An expert testified that Sophie was shot with a 22 caliber bullet. Downs' did not testify at the trial, but jurors heard a recording of his conversation with investigators. He denied knowing Sophie and keeping a gun in his dorm room. In the recording, he also told police that he was with his then girlfriend all evening when the crime took place. The girlfriend testified during the trial that Downs had left the room several times that evening. During closing statements, Prosecutor Jenna Gernstein encouraged jurors to remember that Downs' DNA was found at the scene and that the alternative suspects raised by the defense had been ruled out because their own DNA did not match any found at the scene. The jury deliberated for days before reaching a verdict on February 8, 2022. Downs was found guilty of both charges against him. Jenna Gerdstein said, We are grateful that Stephen Downs was held accountable for his actions after almost 30 years and hope that Sophie's family and the Fairbanks community as a whole are able to obtain some closure in light of this verdict. Downs' attorney, James Hallenick, said that Downs and his team of defense lawyers were disappointed by the verdict and that there would likely be an appeal. It was a very emotional and difficult case, he said. Obviously, we continue to believe in the innocence of our client, but we also respect the process and we respect the jury's verdict. Hawanik said questions about the genetic genealogy will likely be erased on appeal. The science is relatively new and Downs is the first man in Alaska to stand trial for a charge that resulted from genetic genealogy. The science is controversial when used by law enforcement because it could infringe on constitutional rights, Hawanik said. A lot of people across the country are watching this case and wondering whether it's going to go up to the Supreme Court, and this could be the opportunity to litigate that, he said, so we'll see. 
Downs is being held without bail at the Fairbanks Correctional Center and is scheduled to be sentenced in September. He faces a maximum prison sentence of 129 years. Nine-year-old Marie Chivarella lived with her family in Hazleton, Pennsylvania in 1964. On March 18th, Maurice left her Hazleton home early to deliver canned goods to a nun before attending class at St. Joseph's Parochial School. Sometime during her half-mile walk, Maurice disappeared. When she was marked absent from school and did not return home for lunch like she normally would, her family called the police to report her missing. That afternoon, Maurice's body was discovered two miles away from her house in a strip mining pit near the Hazleton Municipal Airport. Her wrists and ankles were bound by her own shoelaces and her scarf was stuffed in her mouth. She had been indecently assaulted and strangled. Investigators collected DNA belonging to an unknown man from the crime scene. It was collected so that it could be used later. In 2007, investigators used the DNA sample to create a DNA profile of the suspect. It was submitted into the combined DNA index system, but no matches could be made unfortunately. Investigators did not give up, and every month they would compare the DNA profile to the new entries in the database. In 2019, their persistence finally matched a distant relative of the suspect. From 2019 to 2021, authorities conducted numerous interviews and collected DNA samples from this family. The samples helped narrow in on four suspects, but one of them caught investigators' attention because of his criminal history. That person was James Paul Forte, he was not part of the initial investigation in 1964. They noticed that he had passed away in 1980 due to natural causes at the age of 38. With the assistance of the Luzerne County District's Attorney's Office, investigators exhumed Forte's body to obtain his DNA sample. After some more DNA testing, they were able to confirm in February of 2022 he was responsible for taking Maurice's life. The chance of another person having this same profile is 1 in 480 septillion. Police stated Forte was arrested in Hazleton back in 1974 on similar charges with a different victim. He was later arrested in 1978 for reckless endangerment and harassment. Police said it may not have been the only crime Forte committed and asked anyone with information to come forward. Marie Chivarella's case was the oldest cold case in Pennsylvania and the fourth oldest case in America to be solved with genetic genealogy, authorities said. Maurice's brother, Ronald Chivarella, attended the press conference and had this to say. Now that we know the individual, it gives us a sense of closure. Not full closure, we'll never have that, but a sense of closure that we know the individual that did it, and that the individual isn't out committing the same crime and hurting other young girls like Maurice. Forte lived six or seven blocks away from the Chivarellas. Authorities stated relatives did not know Forte and believed the attack was random. Today, Maurice and Chivarella would be 67 years old.